So you've decided to get your first ham radio license, or maybe you want to upgrade to the next level. So how do you go about preparing for the test? If I've learned nothing else from my time as a volunteer examiner, I've come to realize that many people go about it all wrong. And I don't want this to happen to you. So allow me to take a few minutes to show you the best ways to prepare for a ham radio exam and ensure your success. Welcome to the House of Ham. I am Bob, WV7W, and I have observed a lot of people taking their ham radio exams. I can easily tell who prepared well and who didn't. So let's start off with the wrong way. This is by far the most common thing I hear from those who have failed in an exam. They only took practice tests. They take a bunch of practice tests and get good scores on them and think that is good enough. Sometimes it works, but more often than not, it doesn't. If you get lucky and only get questions you've seen, you'll be fine. But I'm here to tell you that it is almost a statistical certainty that you will likely not see all the questions this way. And if you get questions you haven't seen, your chances of passing go down dramatically. And don't get me wrong, practice tests are not a bad thing but you should hold off on taking them until you've seen all of the questions. So let's take a look at how a ham exam is formatted. It doesn't matter whether you're taking the technician, the general, or the extra. They're all formatted the same way. Now let's look at this technician exam, which is the entry-level exam all prospective hams must pass. The technician test is comprised of 35 questions, taken from a pool of 412 possible questions. And you must get 26 of those 35 correct, or 74%. Now, they don't just take 35 random questions from the question pool and throw them at you. The test is broken down into 10 chapters, or what the SCC calls sub-elements. And each sub-element has anywhere from two to six topic areas. And you will have exactly one question from each topic area. And of each of those topic areas, there's between 10 and 14 possible questions, of which one will be on your exam. Now let's take a hop over to my favorite way to prepare for your exam, and that is to use the free website, hamstudy.org. Richard, KD7BBC, has done some great work to bring this wonderful tool to help you get your ham radio license. And I would like you to at least give it a look before you go and jump to any of the other options. Now, once you're on ham study, you can select which exam you want to study for. In this example, we'll go into the technician exam. And you will see that there are three options. Study mode, read questions, and practice tests. You will also notice off to the right it says, to see your study history, you must log in or register for a free account. I highly recommend you do this. This way you will see your progress and know when you have seen all of the questions. So where do you start? You may think you should start with study mode, but I recommend you go directly to read questions. Study mode is kind of like the practice test is that you will be presented with questions in a random fashion. With read questions, you can go through them in a methodical and structured way. Once you are in the read questions area, you will notice that you can select each sub-element. So sub-element T1 is the commission rules. In T1, there are six topics. So in topic T1A, purpose and permissible use of amateur radio service is covered. And there are 11 possible questions. One of those questions will be on your exam. Now read each of the questions and the correct answers. If you come across a question that you don't quite understand the answer, you can click in the upper right hand corner and see a description of that answer. There's two types of questions to consider in a ham exam. There are those that you just need to memorize, like rules and band limits and such. 
And then there are those that are technical concepts, such as formulas, that you're better off to understand the principles by simply memorizing the questions. Now, it is up to you if you want to try and understand the concepts or if you just want to memorize. Either way can get you prepared for the exam. It is entirely up to you which way works best for you. Now, once you've reviewed all of the questions, you can then go and take some practice tests to see how you're progressing. After you take each practice test, take a look at the questions you got wrong and go over that material again. In fact, I would spend some extra time looking at that entire topic area. Once you routinely are getting over 80%, you should be ready to take your actual exam. Now, hamstudy.org is not the only study option. There's also ham radio prep, which is very popular, and people seem to have good luck with it. It isn't free, though, but it does go much deeper in describing things. So if you don't really understand the questions in hamstudy.org, you may want to consider ham radio prep. If you're someone who prefers a physical book, I recommend this one by Gordon West. Gordo does a great job explaining all of the aspects that you need to understand to pass your exam. Just make sure you get the right version that covers the current question pool. Whichever method you choose to use, make sure you've seen all of the questions and then take some practice tests. Being well prepared will not only ensure your success, but will make you feel more confident and comfortable while taking the test. Now that you're ready for the test, you can find a test session that suits you by going on hamstudy.org and clicking on that Find a Session button. From there, you can select either in-person or remote sessions. And if you want to know more about remote testing, you can uh, watch my recent video on testing online and see why it is likely the most convenient way to take a test. Plus, you don't have to wait for an in-person session, which are much less frequent. Now, hopefully this gives you what you need to pass your ham radio exam. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73s.